What I'm going to cover in this video is how to add in basic interactivity into the animate Adobe Edge Animate timeline so that we can experience the timeline in a non-linear manner. So the first step is to get some basic animation worked into the tool. So if I have a basic object, I'm just going to do some simple animation with it over time so that I've now keyframed it and I will just do a basic one second animation animating on a path makes for a more interesting experience so that we can work with it so now I have a basic one second animation I have a box that will now move across the screen now, the next thing that we will want to do is to add in what will end up being a couple of our navigation controls. So with this, I'll have three separate animations. At the end of the first animation, then I want to have two buttons that I can use to navigate through my project. So I'll have these two buttons. Now, right away, we will notice that the two buttons are there the entire time but I only want them to show up at the very end so to take care of that I can select both of these buttons then I can move over into my property panel over on the left and where it says always on I can now choose on and what that does is that automatically assumes you did not want to see those objects prior so they've now disappeared and they show up now at this point we can see here there is the keyframe where they turn on and they are off until that point now I'm going to just skip over to two seconds and at this point I will build my next animation. So if I click on the leftmost circle I want to jump to two seconds in my timeline. And to do that I will just highlight all of these objects because I don't want to see them anymore so I can build and add in new artwork. Now if I go up here we'll see that on, off, always on, that's all disappeared. I put my cursor over it I see that the display property is still there. We get that tiny little arrow indicating that yeah there is something there. So with that if I click I can now choose off and it keyframes them and they disappear. Now what I can do is I can now add in a new object and work with that. Now one thing I should probably do before I go any further is I should save this. So I should save it going to put mine on the desktop. I always want to make sure I'm saving into a folder so all of my files get contained. Give it a name. I don't have to put in the .html. It's automatically going to do that for me. It makes the animate file. It does all the extra includes. All of the goodness that I need to pull this off all get saved into that folder. So I hit save. Now we're in good shape. Now I have one object here. I am going to then animate that over the course of one second. So I will move the playback head up. And actually before I do that, I'm going to move the playback head back. And I will choose motion paths again because it's a little bit faster. Add in a keyframe. So it's been at a starting keyframe. I'll move this object down. Now it moves on that path. Now one thing to keep in mind is that while we're doing this, we don't have to only be moving one object, but I could be moving more than one object. And for that matter, I could be moving three objects. So there's really no limit to what you can do. So I could have a complex set of layers and characters and other things that I am animating. If I select these two objects, say motion path, keyframe their starting position. So it's keyframed. Now go to the end here. And we can have those two move down. This one will pull out this way. This one pull out that way. So now if I watch my animation I can see how they animate. And I'm also going to then modify the middle object so that it starts animating a little bit after so it doesn't really touch the first one. I just think that looks a little bit nicer. Now one thing we'll notice is these objects are existing 
at the beginning. So they are now here in my beginning. So now that I've added these objects, one thing I will want to do is modify them. If I currently look, they are set to always on. But I can take these three objects and I can modify their property from always on and say on. I wanted them to appear at this point. You notice the hash marks, the gray showing up in the timeline here indicating that no, they're not going to be there. And now we get these three objects animating. And at this point I want to provide another button that I will be able to use to return home. And the reason that we need to do this is if I don't use a button, then when I get to this point when we build in the interactivity we won't be able to move through time but we will be trapped at the end of this sequence and that won't be very exciting. Actually it will be rather dull and boring so it's not really what we want. So we can see there, okay now I want to modify that button and say on on this frame. So it's not there until boom it comes in. Now we're going to move over to this point which will be my next animated sequence highlight all of these frames and simply say off and they go away now I can add in a new object to animate and I will draw that object and once that object is drawn I will choose motion paths give it a starting keyframe move it out a second for my one second of animation move the object over and we can see how it's now moving on a path. Now I'm going to add in a few anchor points along the way and this is the beauty of working with the motion path is I can add in these points and we can see how these handles are modifiable the same way any Bezier path handle is modifiable in say Illustrator or Photoshop. So it's the same as any other kind of Bezier curve. If I choose Auto Orient, it's just kind of more fun as the object curves and follows that path, which makes it, I think, kind of interesting to watch. But again, we can see now that object, we really don't want it to be on until this point in time. So click on the object at the point we want to see it and choose On. Now it disappears until that point. So we can see we're really starting to build up our project. Now I'm going to add in another button and while I'm using simple basic shapes, circles and rectangles and squares to be my artwork, this is really a placeholder artwork that you could use buttons that you've created in Photoshop or Illustrator and saved out as PNGs and bring those files in. So there's nothing to say it has to be boring squares and circles and rectangles, but instead we certainly could add in much more interesting artwork. And finally I will choose on to turn that on, so now it disappears. So my first sequence, I animate through the box, animates, two buttons show up. My next sequence, the three boxes animate, button shows up at the end. Final sequence, the one box animates, button shows up at the end. Now if we look in our elements window, we can see that the naming of these ellipse, ellipse 2, ellipse 3, ellipse 4, rectangle, rectangle 2, 3, 4, 5, none of that's particularly useful as far as names go, so you're encouraged to rename things as you see fit. Now the next point to think about is this number that we see here. That indicates I'm at four seconds with, so it's a four with three zeros after it, or 4,000 milliseconds. And we will be utilizing milliseconds as our unit of measure to specify a point in time when we are trying to jump there through code. Now that my base animation is all set and configured, now it's time to start adding in my actions. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a stop so that at the end of this animation it stops when those buttons show up. And we can do that by inserting a trigger onto the stage's main actions. To insert the actions or the trigger that we are going to work with, we can right click on the stage area and it says open actions for stage. I can click on this little icon. We also see it says insert trigger. So if I click on that, it inserts a trigger there. We can see how it showed up in the timeline. 
and I'm going to insert some code. We're trying to control the playback of our main timeline. Now, we could certainly add it. If I click there, it opens a link, or text comes up, or you know, hide show, something. We get to this point, something shows, something hides, all kinds of coolness. But what we care about is playback. And the first thing we're going to do is say stop, and then we have to figure out who to stop. We're going to tell, in this case, the stage. And we double click it. Now turn the code to no longer gray. It's not commented out. It's now real code. And now I can close that. I'm going to then test my movie. And when it comes up in the web browser, I see the animation. The buttons come up. Now neither one does anything. So we're kind of stuck there. So now, if I go back into Edge Animate, We'll code the buttons in a second, but first what I want to do is add in stops at the other points in time. So again, click under Add Trigger, Command T. Now we're adding a trigger at three seconds in time. Playback, stop, double click stage, close out. Repeat the process. Move to the end of the animation. Insert my trigger. Playback, stop. Double click stage, inserts the code, close out of here. So now I have my stop. So each animation, once I get to the other ones, will indeed stop. Now comes the magic of convincing this button to go to where it needs to go. And now I want, when I click on the left button, I want it to jump to two seconds in time. So with that button selected, I can right click and choose open actions. And now we can choose what event is going to make it happen. We have touch events, we have mouse events, we have clicking events. I'm going to stick with the ubiquitous click for now. And I'll choose click and then choose playback. And now at this point we get to choose play from. We're going to tell the stage to play from a specific point in time. And we can see where we have symbol play 1000. But it's grayed out so I can't make it work yet. If I double click it's no longer gray. I can now enter in the number that I need. Now looking at that, we're currently at 1, which is 1,000. We want to get to 2, which is going to be 2,000 milliseconds. So I type in 2,000. And now I can close out of there. Now we could go through and code everything, but it's really a good idea to verify it works before we go through and add in more and more and more and more code and then find out we're doing it all wrong or it's broken or some other problem has befallen us. So now it comes up, there it is, there's my buttons. I click here and we can see indeed it worked, but now we're kind of stuck. So once again, click on the object, right click, open actions, choose your event that you want to make it happen, playback. Play from, double click stage, enter in the number you want it to go to. In this case, it will be 4,000 or four seconds. That will jump me, this is for the purple button, and it will jump me over to that point in time. So now my two buttons are coded. Let's test that once more. Button one works, now I click here. That worked, but I can't get out of here yet. So we still need to work on that. And since we finished on that frame, we'll resume on that frame, right click. Open Actions, Click Event, Playback, and then I can choose Play From, Double Click Stage. Now I want to actually go back to 1000, which is the default. That will bring me back to this frame where my buttons are so then I can make a different choice. So let's see if that works. That means I click on the right button, I click here, it brought me back to that frame. We've now proven it works. So now I go here, click on the button, right click, actions, choose my event, playback, play from, double click stage, and once again it's going back to the beginning. So right now we have this nice shortened timeline where it now does these basic jumps and it moves through. Now something else that we can do